we got something else that I want to address um, that we're going to kind of end the show off here. And then I hope we can just kind of loop everything back around. And I have to address this. And I talked about the Dazzlers in the beginning of the show. I bought so, 40 on eBay. I got 40 copies. I hear Swag is pretty available now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually, yeah. Hit, hit up my inbox. And, and, and I'll tell you what, guys, you know, um, I, I got a price to like what? This is $25 near mint copy. Uh, I'll sell it to you for a hundred, um, and I'll give you a shout out on my channel. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this has been this has been probably the biggest conflict of interest argument that has been going on for a long time. We're gonna go way beyond that, way beyond the drama of the last few weeks, and we're just gonna go back to the optics of people that have YouTube channels and that have a certain level of success, and they may talk about hot book lists, top 10 lists. These books are booming. These books are doing this or that. And maybe they have an eBay store. Maybe they sell on whatnot. Maybe they do live streams on Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. And where does the line, where's that fine line drawn when it comes to conflict of interest? Um, we have YouTubers that sell comics that have partnerships with certain apps. We have certain apps that have partnerships with eBay. So the big question to ask here is, is this just business, right? And it goes back to, maybe it's just about transparency and running an ethical business and how we perceive it, or is, it, or is there really a conflict of interest here? And um, so Bronze, we'll, we'll start with you on this. And I know this is like, I'm not setting you up with a very, you know, strict question here, because this this can be a bit of a broad uh, topic of discussion here, but I'm trying to look yeah. at a, just a, a focal point. And I'll ask by saying this, I guess, like, at what point, if I'm, well, let me give you an example, because I didn't start selling comics myself until like the beginning of this year. You know, when I had like 11,000 subscribers on YouTube, uh, but it was always my goal to start selling comics. Always. I always wanted to own my own shop. And finally, you know, last year I bought my own little collection. And then I started getting a few more. And, and I had my first sale on whatnot, I think, in December of, of 2020. Mm -hmm. Right when that happened, I got people that had watched my channel for a long time telling me that I'm a sellout. You know, I'm, I'm ripping grandma and grandpas off and all this stuff. Like... Is it, do you think it is really, is there a, a point where it becomes a conflict of interest? Or do you think maybe it's more of just this optic of people having pitchfork fork mentality and it's really a matter of because you have success, I'm gonna say that you're doing this wrong. Or do, is, there, is there any validity in this to say there is some type of conflict of interest when a YouTuber is actually selling comic books? Yeah, I mean, right at the point, uh, right at the point where you start buying up all the dazzlers, that's that's exactly where you cross the line. So, look, I think this is something you know we kind of talked about this before the show. Something I want to bring up if we're going to talk about this, it, from at least my perspective, I have to present that there is a conflict here. I am a YouTuber. I am arguably, I don't really think so that I'm an influencer, but there's probably some people that would say some of us are that kind of thing. So that needs to be baked into the conversation. Point number one. Uh, so take everything. This is just my opinion. This is how I view it. Now, I also am a YouTuber that doesn't really make content saying you should buy this book. You should do that. If anything, I actually do the opposite. I, I kind of try to break people of their FOMO or at least provide them the devil's advocate perspective. So that's a big part of what I do. Part of the reason I do that is because I know I also sell comic books and I don't want to have anybody say, you're still in Moon Knight 1 because you were talking about how awesome it is. And, you know, I, I kind of want to avoid those conversations. But I also don't necessarily fault those that do that. It's it's not what you do, it's how you do it. It's the level of transparency you provide. There isn't necessarily a more clear-cut conflict of interest for a YouTuber or, an, you know, let's say a big person on IG or whatever selling than there is some, like a comic book store. Yes. Like, what is a comic book store? A comic book store is a reseller by nature. Yep. Most comic book stores, most, and this is, you know, exclusives kind of changes a little bit. They are producing their actual comic books. 
even if they're buying it, you know, from Marvel, DC, through Penguin, through Lunar, through, you know, Diamond, through all these different sources, they're reselling those comic books. Now they're doing that as a retailer, but they're also buying up collections and they're selling them. They have IGs, they have whatnot. And you too. I think that to a certain extent, you have to kind of view the people in the community that do this as sort of like an independent comic book store, which most comic book stores are independent. And I think that's an important way to kind of couch this whole conversation. There are definitely ways where it can become that slippery slope. And I really encourage people in this space to continue to be uh, upfront about what they're doing, to be upfront about, you know, the, the types of products they're offering, the services they're offering, the, the platforms they're offering them on. If they are receiving, you know, promotional copies from a service, I'd recommend that they disclose that. Make that part of the agreement you have with that group is that, you know, hey, uh, I got 100 copies from you to sell this. Like when I do giveaways on my channel or something like that, I, I mentioned like, you know, this is a promotion I'm doing with this person or this this company decided to send me this book so I could share some with you guys. It's a win for everybody. I always disclose the nature of those agreements because I think it's so important to to be upfront about that. And if you want to be continue to be respected in this industry, you have to approach it from that angle because there are people that have lost that respect based on how they've reacted or based on their lack of transparency recently. Again, I'm a huge believer in not bringing out the pitchforks on those people. I think you should, you should choose to not support them necessarily, not follow them if you have problems with that. Um, I think there's a lot of hate and vitriol that gets directed at certain people just because people don't respect that. And a lot of that ties into what you mentioned earlier, Chris. It's, it's things like a, a form of jealousy or a form of envy for the platform and the mouthpiece they might have in some cases. And that, you know, the community needs to be honest with itself a little bit about why some of those reasons that they have issues with this take place. That's just sort of my, my initial thoughts on it there. I'm, I can't wait to hear what Mickey has to say about this. Love it, man. Yeah, Swagman. So, and just to add, uh, before you jump in here, you know, I, I think about like, oh, well, we, we, we as YouTubers shouldn't sell books that we're talking about. But my 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 question is, is why, as long as like to some of what Bron said, as long as we're being honest, right? So say, for example, you know, and I know you and I, we do a lot of market videos where we're looking at what books are doing. Um, say, you know, say I, I do a list of like, you know, X, uh, affordable X-Men keys that you could buy right now. And I have this Dazzler number one, but I got like, you know, 20 something copies, right? But I put this up and I say Dazzler number one, first solo series of Dazzler. And I say current 9.8 CGC fair market value this, three years ago this, that's a 45% increase in value. Raw average value is this, three years ago was this, that's a 82 increase in value. Um, does does that change the game if, if I'm doing that? Is that wrong? Is that a conflict of interest? It, but, but, but the information and the data is factual and honest? Well, yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, to answer your question, no, I don't think that that is wrong because take away me, you know, doing YouTube, that's the type of video I want to watch as a collector. I want to know that stuff. So there, there's going to be, I know that there's people out there, right, that, that want to know that information and they go to YouTube to, to find that because, you know, for them, this is a good resource. You know, uh, I, I, they might not have the time to kind of dig into the numbers and stuff. And so they look to Journo or, you know, whoever, like to, to kind of break it down for them. And that's very, very helpful. So that particular part is how I feel about that. I mean, it's, it's a tough question and I, I don't know if it's unanswerable. I think that there is, there's a particular sensitivity, I think specifically to comic book collectors with this particular topic. And shout out to Neo Cards and Comics. If you guys know Neo, I'm a journal, I know you know Neo, but he, you know, he does a lot of, he talks about comic books as well, but he talks a lot about the sports card market. And, and he says, as someone who kind of has like one foot in, one foot out to both markets, he's like, the, the comic book collectors are way more sensitive to this whole like spec uh, selling the whole deal. Whereas like in the sports card world, they're like, yeah, obviously people sell and they talk about the sports cards. So, it's kind of an interesting thing that like, and I don't know where that comes from culturally within the comic book collecting hobby. I think maybe that just comes to the idea that, you know, people don't like to see comics as being expensive and things like that. So there's that element. I know, I know there's, there's a lot of time unpack here. I can only say what for me, like how I, I kind of look at it. I think as someone who does it, I think you just have to make sure that you're holding yourself accountable in a way and figuring out what might be sort of the best way to, um, you know, put out that information out there. Because, you know, I 
have a YouTube channel. And I also sell comic books. I'm not really like a comic vendor. Like I don't sell anywhere at the level that I think a lot of other people do. But yeah, I, you know, have a little pocket money that I sell on on things like eBay. And, and I've done claim sales on my YouTube and stuff like that. Um, but I do, as as the channel has grown, it has become more of a thing where I, I, I've noticed that when I do put out a video of like, here's five spec books that I think personally might be, you know, go up in value or here's some books to invest in. I now do see it having a little bit of an effect on eBay. Like I can see that, oh, all of a sudden I talked about this thing and yep. there were 15 sales that week, you know, and I've seen it to where when I put out the video, Key Collector never says, Swagglehaus YouTube channel says it, but like I know that I've been responsible for certain ones that have showed up on on Trending 20 or Hot List or whatever. And and it makes me feel uncomfortable personally. It, it actually does make me feel weird yep. about it. So I've... I've dialed back a little bit of that content and I and I've tried to just figure out the balance of this is just information that I think people want to know and I'm just trying to share it with you guys versus right. like you know uh you know buy this book oh th this is the next big thing and and just that energy I think yeah. is is really like the the balance that that I I'm, I'm always looking to do and then and then there's the other element too where it's like I I don't know what's better. Should I be talking about books that I myself own or should I be talking about books that I don't own? Because if I own it, then you know that I at least bought it. But then if I own it, maybe I'm trying to sell it. So, you know, I don't really know what's the better way to do it. So I, I, I know I said a lot, but that that's, these no. are all the ideas that I think about a lot in my head. And I think it just comes down to, um, you know, the the individual person and the transparency that they that they have right. and, and, and what kind of, you know, delivery and energy they put out in doing it, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with being an influencer or having a platform and also selling comic books. I think it can be done in a very, you know, um, uh, transparent and positive way. Right. No, I, I hear you. And it's funny too, because when I do like my, you know, top X-Men books to invest in or something like that, you know, 25 under 25 and people in their comics are like, I just picked this up due to your, you know, suggestion. I'm like, I told you guys in the video, don't buy it just because I said so. So like you said, it's, but you know, hey, but you're right. It's like collectors are looking for people to give us this information so we could then, you know, because, and I've said this a lot. I don't sit and make these videos on books that I have. I mean, books will come up. And sometimes when I'm going through it, okay, number four on the list, I was able to pick this one up six months ago. And I'll say that or like, I don't have this one yet, but this one is, I don't know if I'll be able to get it because it's doing this. So I'm a little, I'm transparent there, but I'll, I'll do, I'll say, okay, I know the X-Men are going to be coming in the, in the MCU. Let me do a, let me do an X-Men affordable keys. And then I do my list and I film my video and you know what I'm doing for the ones that I don't have, I'm giving myself FOMO because yeah. now I'm, I'm doing the research myself talking about it. Now I'm going on the market. So, uh, but I, I hear you, man, because I get those comments. I've seen sales after I talk about books and mm -hmm. it's a little uncomfortable, but at the end of the day, I, I think you're right. And you made a great point. It's like people want this. And as long as we got to be conscious of how we want to operate, uh, you know, and, and conduct our business and to uh, buy and sell, who are we talking about? Say names. We're not talking about anybody in, in particular. We're talking about the, the business of having a YouTube channel and, and being, being a face behind a screen and selling comic books at the same time. And especially as you get more and more success um, in, in what that means. So, you know, we're, we're not, please, no, we're not sitting here like trying to insinuate, oh, we're talking about the same people that get pitchforks picked up to them. That's what I'm trying to end right here. It's just like, let's have a conversation to talk about how we all can be accountable, us in front of screens and you guys. So you guys need to be accountable by not, oh, we're talking about selling comic books and, and making uh, uh, YouTube videos and so-and-so, that's so-and-so, like, pitchfork, you know? Sure. Jared, if this, if this Dazzler do, one doesn't go to the moon, I'm going to blame you. All right, I know, you right I know, I know, I know, right? Nucking here, uh, YouTube and social media is destroying the comic book world. I disagree, but I always do believe that technology, social media, YouTube, it could be our best friend or it could be our worst enemy. And it all depends on how we utilize it. And I know Swag just did a video recently kind of talking about the concerns 
Um, but you know what's ruin you know what's gonna ruin? And I want to kind of end on this note, and I want you both to have um a say in this as a closeout. Everyone, first off, I want to reiterate that it's just it's absolutely nuts how much how serious comic book collecting has become. And I don't mean serious like I mean serious in terms of stressful and angry and aggressive and and just toxic this comic book community industry hobby has become. And again, there's a lot of righteous concern there. Don't get me wrong. But we got to find a way to calm this down. We do. Now, we are entering a new age of technology. I think, Swag, you talked about this too in your video the other day. The COVID has changed things for comic books. And again, it's kind of like what, what Nucking here is saying about the internet. It's like, we are given tools. It depends on how we use them. So the COVID age of things, we can take these tools and we can propel comic books to a new, uh, new horizon that we've never seen before, or we can keep making the same mistakes and, and be somewhere that we know oh too well. And I'm going to tell you guys, you know who's responsible for that outcome, either or? It's not me. It's not Bronze. It's not Swaggle. It's not Comic Tom or, or Skeff or whatnot or CGC or any of them. You know who it is? It's you guys. You guys are more powerful than all of us combined. You know that? And that's a fact. And, and now, and I'm going to explain myself by answering the question that I just asked Bronze and Swag about, is there a conflict of interest or what, what the, what is the deal with influencers or, you know, selling comics and all this stuff? It boils down to honesty and transparency. As long as you are not feeding anyone lies. Now, let's go back to what I said at the beginning here we go, this Dazzler book again. Gee, gee, this guy no. never stops talking about it, you know, yeah. just pumping it up. What did I say? I said I have substantial evidence of rumors that Dazzler's going to show up. This book is hot. Cop it while you can. And then I go into my whatnot sell and sell my 20, 30, 40 copies, right? Or I go place it on eBay. I gave, I lied to you. I lied to you all because I don't have no information. The only thing I know is my own assumptions. We know X-Men are coming. This is a nice little minor key that's been getting a little hotter on the market. Um, I like the Dazzler character, and I do believe that when we start seeing mutants in the MCU, we're probably going to start seeing some that we didn't really see play a role in the Fox franchise films. So that might lead me to believe that there's room for, for Dazzler, and we know that Marvel Studios is willing to take risks with some of these characters like Dazzler. I mean, look at what they're doing with She-Hulk and all the role players that we've seen already on the Sea hulk show. I gave you false information, but I can give you that information correctly. And until somebody is putting a gun to your head, literally, literally you guys have more power and responsibility on where this comic book community and hobby and industry is going. Because at the end of the day, people on YouTube do what they do because of what you guys do. We make videos, most of us, because of what you guys click on or comment on or thumbs up. We sell the books that you want to buy because you buy them. Black Flag did what they did because there's a market for them. CGC wants to get in on uh, on on saying that this is their own exclusive because there's a market for it because people buy it right people make top 10 videos because you watch it people sell huge uh, or or you know dollar bin books on whatnot for 30 bucks because you bid on it what not uh, uh, collaborates with CGC because you're right there watching it, entering those giveaways, and then hopping into Jim Lee's show, 
moments after in bidding up the books. Now, I know some of you may not be the ones that are doing this, and some of you are. So all you can do as an individual, if you're sitting there saying, well, that ain't me. I don't watch those channels. I don't use whatnot. Da, 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 da. Then just keep doing you. And if, if your intent is to want to use whatnot, but you just don't like what they're doing, then remember what I said. Don't go picking up a pitchfork and scaring them to where they run and close that door. And when the door's closed, then you turn around and point a finger at them and come back on your social media and influence your followers saying, you see, what are they hiding? You have to be productive as well. You guys have to be just as responsible and transparent is anybody sitting in front of a screen, anybody selling on whatnot, or anybody running a business that grades books, publishes books, etc. And that is what I want to be the biggest takeaway because I truly believe at the end of the day, there, there are some, there's some conflicts of interest here. There are. And we didn't get to we didn't get to a to a, to a solution tonight. It wasn't meant to, but we didn't. But I think it's safe to say that the majority of the problem in this hobby is not conflict of interest because they're sitting there like, oh, yeah, we're going to scheme this and scheme that. The problem is that, yes, this is a business and people need to make money, but they need to do it with more transparency. And the problem of why it's not getting solved is because we have a divide and conquer mentality. We're like the opposite ends of a magnet's pushing against each other. They do something they that, that's not transparent. And then you guys push back with the pitchforks and the divide to solving something gets bigger and bigger and bigger instead of trying to close the gap. 